Next up, at UFC St. Louis, we got Terrence McKinney taking on Esteban Ribovic. This is another fight. Billy Goff is a name that's popping up as everybody's favorite underdog. Terrence McKinney is one of the other names that's popping up as everybody's favorite underdog. And I get it. Terrence McKinney is a talented, insanely talented dude. He is 15-6 and six in his career. But he is 3-2 and two in his last five. He was on a two-fight skid, snapped that. And now he's on a two-fight win streak. He's taking on Esteban Ribovic. 12-1 overall. 4-1 and one in his last five. He's coming off the decision win over no longer in the UFC, Kamuela Kirk. But I mentioned Terrence McKinney's a lot of people's favorite dog. Terrence McKinney, unbelievably talented. Terrence McKinney, fast as shit. Hits hard. Phenomenal wrestling. He was a Juco All-American, if I'm not incorrect. Terrence McKinney is insanely talented. And we've said this more than one time. If Terrence McKinney had cardio and a chin, he could be a world champion. He has all the talent in the world. The two things he doesn't have is cardio. He will slow down at an incredible rate. And a chin, you cannot rely on his chin. And that's not his fault. There's nothing you can do about that. It's just, you take a punch or you can't. It just is what it is. But he is nuts good, nuts talented, and has all of those skills there. So I totally understand why people love him as an underdog. He's taking on Esteban Ribovic. And we're about to find out if Esteban's going to be that guy or not. Because he's an impressive striker. He's got sneaky power. His strikes are tight. They're short. They're accurate. He's got that high, tight guard. And he works forward picking his shots despite... His impressive knockout highlights, he's not just a striker. He's got good takedowns, solid BJJ. He'll shoot clean doubles, upper body trips, whatever he needs to do to get you to the ground. And as soon as he does, he will immediately look to snatch something up. I get Esteban being the favorite here. Almost in minus 161, I get it. I get it. That's a 65%, I mean, the math that I just did there, 65% accuracy, something like that, or that's what the implied probability is. He's a technical striker, and you can trust him. He will do what you expect him to do. But it is hard to look away from Terrence McKinney's wrestling, Terrence McKinney's raw talent, Terrence McKinney's power, his speed. And Esteban Rubix has been taken down 14 times in his last dose fights. Terrence has also been finished in all of his losses. Esteban's not exactly a finisher. So Esteban's not a guy that's going to come in there, immediately spark you, move on, super dangerous. But he is a talented striker. He is patient. He is all the things. This is another tricky spot. I do not have a bet here. I am going to lean Esteban. When I get matchups like this, I tend to lean towards a person I can trust. I can trust Esteban. I know what he's going to do. I don't know what Terrence McKinney's going to do. He might come out, wrestle heavy, look absolutely spectacular, or he might come out, look great early, and then sort of flatten out, if you will. Terrence McKinney is the more talented, better fighter, the less consistent fighter. I'm going to lean with consistency here. I have no bet on this fight whatsoever, literally because it's a tricky one to trust. If I did, if I was going to place a bet, I think a sneaky over one and a half because Esteban Rebovics is not nearly as dangerous as some of Terrence's previous opponents. Jacob, are you focused? What do you think? Um, I'm struggling. Pacers are down five. I mean, the refs are just right now just out of control. I mean, he just got pushed in the fucking back, brother. Yeah. All right. So when I was breaking down this fight, I had seen comments in the Discord, on Twitter, all sorts of stuff uh, about uh, Rebovix. Uh, about Rebovix, right? I heard Rebovix, Rebovix. And I just assumed against Terrence McKinney that Rebovix was going to be was a dog and people like the dog value Rebovix to weather the storm and then do what he does because Rebovix really does come on strong in the second in the third rounds he really looks like the Rebovix he should look like so I was like okay I get it right Terrence McKinney's usually a first round guy Rebovix can weather the storm for, for for plus money I understand the value of wanting to bet a guy like Rebovix then I saw that he was a favorite and now he's like what is it he was like a minus 170 something like that if Angelo was paying attention, he could flip the side back. He was, but, minus know. 171. See? Boom. Um, and then I was like, what the fuck is going on? You want to bet 
Rebovics at minus 200 almost against a guy as dangerous as Terrence McKinney because if you watch the Rebovics fights early in fights he gets taken down he gets hit I know he's kind of a slick striker he's got these Kimura sweeps to get back to his feet and all this good stuff but in these first rounds he's a little bit lackadaisical in his defense not only his grappling defense but especially his striking defense as well this guy gets hit and he can take a shot but you don't want to fucking get hit against a guy like Terrence McKinney so honestly I broke down this fight and I thought you know obviously if he can weather the storm that's going to be what happened or maybe he's able to land a shot on Terrence and drop him whatever but I just think he gets hit too much he gets taken down too much in the first round of fights I like Terrence McKinney to come in and do what Terrence McKinney does STL he seems pretty fired up about this card as well I think he comes through and it could steamroll Rebovics you know obviously if he gets out of the first round blah 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 I'm going T-Rex here yeah I get it I get it I, uh, it's another fight. I'm not going to argue with the other side because he's the better, more talented, more dangerous fighter for sure. For sure. But you can't always trust him. You can't always trust him, and that's obviously a bit uh, a bit tricky when it comes to spending money. It's hard to bet on somebody you can't necessarily trust, but he is a good dude who's very good at fighting. $7,300 in DraftKings, he might be the sneaky underdog play. When you go ahead and build your GPP, when you build your large field tournament entries, when you're trying to chase that big money, Terrence McKinney is going to be a sneaky play. You need some exposure there because if he wins, he'll put up huge numbers. And he is very, very affordable here. Esteban Rebix is a bit of a trap, I feel like, because on one hand, when Terrence loses, he gets finished. So his opponents score really well. On the other hand, on the other hand, Esteban Rebix isn't necessarily like a nasty, prolific finisher. Certainly has some finishes, but not an insane amount. If you want to unlock the DraftKings optimizer that will build lineups for you, if you want to unlock the best DraftKings ownership projections in the game, if you want to unlock the picks, the bets, the round line leads, it's only $10 a month. There was a gentleman here that was called out for copying our jokes, for literally stealing my jokes. I got a DM on Instagram shortly after this was airing live. That said, hey, here's a couple of other examples of jokes that this gentleman has stolen. That's what I was reading a second ago. That gentleman has multiple tiers. If you want my DFS content, it costs this. If you want my betting content, it costs it. None of that bullshit here. It's $10 a month. Anything you could ever want or need for 10 simple dollars. We're continuing to add features, add functionality. The website's getting an overhaul. Price isn't going to change. No tiers. No weird levels. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. I uh, saw a lot of Fight Night Picks comments. I mentioned that when I started this whole thing, they were the only channel I knew existed. And I saw what they did. I like what they did. And I said, I can do that. And I, and I think I could do it better. And that's not an insult to them. They're, they're OGs. They, they are the only people in this space that took the actual time to make graphics. They're not doing the lazy topology bullshit. And so Jacob and I, painstakingly, Jacob built this template you're looking at, the graphics, went through all that stuff, and we gave everything our own flavor. But they're OGs. Those, nothing but respect for those guys. They never said shit about anybody. They minded their own business. They did the research. They did more work than anybody else. But they are gone. They left. And um, Craig put out this whole thing as to why he left. He's like, hey, I, I don't have a life. What the fuck are we doing? Yeah, nobody wants that. Yeah, let's get mad at a basketball game. So he left because he's like, I don't have a life. I can't hang out with people. I can't, you know, I can't help my friends do stuff. I, I'm not involved in anybody's lives because I got to watch fights. I got to do this. I got to do that. So he did walk away. He wrote this whole article about it. But either way, those are great dudes that never bothered anybody else, unlike this other generation of uh, dorks. Is that his ice maker? Yeah, it's his ice maker. I thought he was smashing things. His apartment's very small, so it'd be pretty easy to, to smash some stuff. They retired. There are no more YouTube videos. They're done. They might come back at some point, but for now, they are gone. All right, let's move on. Before you go, let me give you $50. Anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets and signs up with any one of our affiliate partners gets $50 as a thank you. Use the link, sign up, make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you.